Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. On today's show, I will be talking with singer-songwriter Danny Hoy. I'll also be talking with author John Leslie and TV happiness coach Marbeth Dunn. I'm going to get things started today, though, with our state representative, Holly Rashine. She was recently awarded Florida Farm Bureau's Legislator of the Year. Holly, thank you so much for being on, and congratulations on your award. I know that's a big deal for a freshman legislator. Thank you, Jenna, and it's always a pleasure to uh, share the morning with you. And I did. Last week I was in Jacksonville, and I was awarded the Florida Farm Bureau's Legislator of the Year. And as a freshman lawmaker from the Keys, I was so privileged and honor, uh, honored to, to take part in, uh, in that celebration and to work so closely this past year with the Florida Farm Bureau. And I uh, got to pass their number one legislative priority, which was the agritourism bill. And I, uh, I just had a great time getting to know the agriculture industry and how important it is to our state. And as you know, half of my district lies in southern Miami-Dade County, which is a heavily agriculture area. And uh, I'm just, like I said, very honored. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to working on some agriculture issues this year. Well, congrats again on that honor. Holly, let's get into some of the issues down here in the Keys. Something that's been in the news a lot lately is flood insurance, and homeowners are experiencing increases in their rates. Now, I know this is a federal issue, but what are you hearing about on the state level? Absolutely, Jenna. As you know, it's, it always seems to be about insurance for us here in the Keys and our, and our high rates. And these flood insurance increases are a result of the passage of the Biggert Waters Act, which Congress passed in 2012. And this was an effort to shore up the National Flood Insurance Program. Apparently there are uh, many homeowners out there that have quote unquote subsidized rates. And this was an attempt to bring them to what are called actuarially sound rates. And as we know, similar to the citizens and the property insurance issue, uh, actuarially sound rates don't mean that they are affordable and we're starting to see policies, the act went, went into effect October 1st, and we're starting to see policies that are jumping 3,000%. For example, there's a home in Kajo whose rate was $695. Well, with this new act and the new rate increases, their policy was going to jump to $44,000. And as you know, a typical homeowner cannot absorb those rate increases. And so we are um, we're working with Congress and I, um, well, I can, I can fill you in on that just a little later. And what is the state doing, Holly, to stop these increases? Well, as you mentioned before, it is a federal issue, but it is affecting us as a state. Uh, we're not alone, though. Mississippi, Louisiana, New Jersey are all feeling the effects of these higher rate increases. So Governor Scott has reached out to President Obama in Congress and, and just letting him know what, what a large issue uh, this is for our real estate market. Uh, the market is just starting to recover, and this is not exactly the message that we need to be sending to new homeowners or people who are, are wishing to buy second homes. Um, I've joined in with Speaker of the House Will Weatherford in writing a letter along with one of my partners in the Miami-Dade delegation, Representative Manny Diaz, and asking that Congress hit the pause button. As part of this act passed in 2012, an affordability study was required. And I heard that that's not even completed and will not be completed for at least two years. So we're asking Congress to hit the pause button on the implementation of this act, as well as finish that affordability study or the feasibility study, because I think they're going to find that the new rates are not affordable for the average homeowner. And we're also uh, asking that they stick to the glide path. And we understand that you know, there may need to be some adjustments, adjustments made to, to flood insurance rates, but glide them. Uh, don't hit homeowners all at once and, and maybe stick to a glide path. And so far, uh, it seems to be, to be working. Congressman, uh, Congressman Garcia's office is on top of this. He's, he's been working diligently. We've been working diligently with his office. And we've heard recently uh, a compromise, a bipartisan compromise has been worked out and will hopefully be voted on by the House and Senate as early as next week, which calls for a postponement of at least four years of this act. 
Great. Well, you'll have to give us an update next month when you return to the show. Holly, let's move into the lionfish problem that we da have down here in the Keys, unfortunately. What is the state doing to stop this? Well, also, just this past week, the FWC, or the Florida Wildlife uh, Co Conservation Commission, held a sold-out summit in Cocoa Beach regarding the invasive species of lionfish. And they basically discussed, there was many keynote speakers and scientists and, and advocates for, for our waters that um, they discussed what are we going to do about this species. As we know in the Keys it's a big deal. All the way up to North Carolina we're seeing the, the invasiveness of this, of this lionfish and we, uh, I hear they're pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. I think our own, uh, our own captain, um, Bill Kelly, he's the executive director of the Florida Keys Commercial Fishing Association, was also a speaker, and he wanted to talk about the viability of a lionfish uh, fishery. Um, mm -hmm. How can we help these commercial guys and, and recreational fishermen um, harvest lionfish, and how do we how do we make it an industry? I'm sure it would be very popular with tourists and, mm -hmm. and locals alike. alike. I've actually tasted lionfish, and I think it's great mm -hmm. uh, fried. Um, it is a dangerous, dangerous fish, though, and we need to make sure that quality standards are in place as well as safety standards. Mm, great. And you're right. They Lionfish are delicious, so <laughs> I Absolutely. like them too. Now, Holly, before we go this morning, let's talk real quick about the construction on North Roosevelt. It recently was turned into two lanes again. What's the progress being made to, to this day? Absolutely, Jenna, and I know folks in Key West, uh, this is a really big issue for them, and I, I enjoy uh, driving down the boulevard every time I'm down here, and I'm so happy and so pleased to see that Des Moines and the Florida Department of Transportation was able to open up the boulevard to two-way traffic uh, ahead of schedule, and I'm hearing that actually the entire project is still on time and uh, I'm hoping that everything will proceed uh, accordingly and maybe they'll actually finish the whole project up early but uh, two-way traffic is is what everybody was hoping for and will hopefully provide the relief to those businesses along the, the boulevard that are that are suffering I, um, I'm hearing there might be some backup on Ke Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that with maybe some light adjustments or maybe some additional signage that will be able to alleviate those concerns. Great. Well, yeah, there definitely are some happier people and some happier businesses since this happened. So, Holly, thank you very much for being back on with me this morning, and you'll give us more updates next month when you're on the show. Looking so forward to mm -hmm. it. Thank you. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.